Hello, everybody. Welcome back. Today, we're going to be looking at Previs and Layout in Houdini. What is Previs and Layout? Essentially, Previs is your first brush of paint on the canvas. So this is where you start developing things. You are having fun with your scene. Uh, if you're working in a studio, that's where you would be taking those storyboards or just concept arts or anything that you have even just looking at the script and transferring that into a 3D environment so everybody on your team or in the other departments can be on the same page. So let's take a look at how we would do previs and then later transitioning into layout in Houdini. Hello everybody, we are here in a blank scene in Houdini. Uh, I, this is the way I like to work. I have two scenes like this opened that are connected together one and one and then I have my geometry and rendering and there's a little sneak peek from for what's uh, waiting for us up ahead anyway I just wanted to give you guys a heads up that even if you're not comfortable or familiar with Houdini that's not really the point the main point is uh, that we will cover and go through all the processes that would occur in a VFX uh, process or scenario or that's how we would do it in a studio environment just so you guys can see if and I really hope so that if you want to learn more and you actually want to enter this industry we have a lot of workshops for you or in uh, intro introductionary workshops on rebelway.net we also have medium to advanced workshops in case you already know all of this with that out of the way, let's start our previous scene. So I'm going to do a ground and I will scale it up like that. I'm going to do another geo. This is going to be on. Yep. Let me just hit the animated ship. File, stop, and I'm gonna bring in our ship like that. Where is it? Here we go. And this beautiful ship, let me give it a better rotation. So, this beautiful ship was uh, modeled for us by Jonathan Lynn. He is a senior modeler at Disney and he did an amazing job. So, thank you, Jonathan. Um, a note and this is like I said not that important but uh, this ship is huge and I did do the mistake of creating this whole in in my original project to create creating this whole scene at this scale and that can create problems a good uh, workflow is that you scale it down to original size because the the way the scale works from Houdini to Maya is different because one is in meters and the other is in centimeters. So there's a big difference in scale. But uh, for now, I'm going to leave it like this. I just wanted to mention that uh, mistakes happen. Anyway, we have this and we have both objects here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to actually extend this ground, showcase everything, and I will be quite generous with it. I'm just going to create a huge plane like this so we can cover a bigger area. So this is going to be our ground for later. Now we only need it to kind of work and what I'm going to do is I'm going to put down a, a mountain stop just so I get some imperfections. So when I'm doing my first previous cameras, I can see that the camera is actually moving otherwise if without this you don't see the movement so that's quite important so we have our ship here have our ground we're missing something let's do a, another geo i'm gonna do a let's see another bit Just so we have something that would mimic a mountainscape because later on we're gonna switch it up actually give you a quick sneak peek 
So this is how the scene looks when it's finalized. You can see we have our mountains here, we have our grid, and that's how, yeah, that's how it's gonna look like with everything together. The reason why I wanted to show you is so you can see the difference between a previous and a final scene because what we're doing right now is not that important nonsense because it's not important because we're going to be changing it quite a lot later and this is just like i said like a first kind of brush of paint anyway so we have this uh, we can also create a sphere let's put a little sphere in there can make change it a bit more subdivision this time I'm going, be, I'm going to use an attribute noise and I'm going to noise up the position and it's going to be zero. All right, so we have something. We have something that resembles a landscape and that's going to help quite a lot or any movement that we want to do with our camera. And I think, so the idea with this project was to just get the ship crash landing, but in a more stylized and fun way. So we have our transform here. Let's do another transform. And this is going to be our previs. So layout and previs, there's a smooth transition when you go from previs to layout. And because what we're doing right now is kind of layout as well, but it's in a very rough state. Like we're not worried about anything. So we have this, I'm gonna move to Centroid just so our pivot, because that's how we wanna animate our ship. So the ship in the beginning, I just wanted to fly because the ship was designed to fly like that. So we want the ship something like that, maybe even higher and something around here I'm gonna keyframe everything and push it down so this is where the ship would stop and I want auto keyframe so every move every change that I do oh that's a bit fast it's gonna, now it's gonna go it's still a bit fast so I'm just gonna extend those keyframes and the ship goes down there we go we never want anything to be fully stopped. So when it stops, you just want it to move down just a little bit. It stops and then it's still, it. you know, you can see the ease out that's happening like that. And now the engine would explode. So let's go to our animation editor. Just so we have a bit more control over our curves. And I will just copy paste this and all of these ones. And the ship is going straight right now. So you never really wanted to the ship to be 100% straight. So you can always rotate it. Something like that. So it's coming down and then it shifts downwards like that. And now the engine explodes. And then it lands. Oh, nice. Beautiful, beautiful stuff. Have to do a camera. Camera. So, this is going to be our M A. Let's go inside. Let's frame our ship like that, something like that. And I'm I will immediately change the resolution to be super cinematic. You see, we kind of get these bars happening here. And what's happening with this is, the reason why this is cinematic is movies are usually using anamorphic lenses. And anamorphic lenses make everything, 
uh, wider. I'm not going to go into too much specifics other than that, that I always use anamorphic like this. It, uh, it just makes it just kind of, I wouldn't say trick, but your mind is adjusted and it has adapted to this look being and you're associating it with something that is a bit more of a higher quality because uh, AAA movies blockbusters are using it. So we have our Cam A. Mind you, this is not true anamorphic. True anamorphic would be changing it with this slider. And then this would give you a squeeze. Uh, let's say would one, three. This would give you a squeeze and then you have to unsqueeze it later. Uh, but this is beyond the scope of this lesson. So we have our camera. So now we have to move it. I already did a series on how I animate my cameras, but I will do one here uh, uh, again, just so we can see it. So keep position. So I'm going to parent this, clean rotation. So now I have another camera that I used to move. You can also put down a null, doesn't really matter. That's fine, that's fine. Previous camera, done. Ah, it's still bothering me, it's so slow. It's too slow, this part. This part comes down. Fine, bam. So this, fast. Bam, yep. Fine, fine, it's all good, it's all good. Previous camera, nothing matters at this point. Just has to do its thing so people can see if it's even working or not. So I would say this kind of works. Uh, in previous, you would also do some very simple effects. So here we would know that, let's say when we do a geo, this, is, this would be our last. Here, we will do a simple sphere, put it here, so the engine explodes, right? So what we would do is animate it here, engine explodes here, to five, and back to zero. Something like that. Maybe make it a bit more faster, Bam. so happens a bit sooner. Again, does it have to be perfect? Bam engine explodes uh, the same thing we can do the same thing for later so here just remove the animation the engine explodes at the end as well probably faster I'm, ne I'm nitpicking here you don't need to do this honestly it's completely fine it just has to be uh, merge these two Alice together like that so this would be this. Uh, go back to our camera, see what's happening. Feels pretty good. Camera's moving. Bam. Yeah, it's a bit too fast. <laughs> Here, I think the camera needs to tilt up a wee bit. So let's go to our ax axes and just have it be like this. So down. A bit more finessing. Yes. Oh, yes. Yes. And then. Bam. 
Perfect. Good. Good stuff. What we need now is a camera shake or just like a global camera shakiness. So what you can do is there's two ways. The, I'm going to show you, I've been using this, uh, been using this CT motion plugin. It's very cool. Uh, we're going to link it somewhere. Uh, it, it just has pre-recorded motion files. So you would have realistic movement that was actually recorded with a VR cam. So that's one way of doing it. All right, so let me just quickly grab a clip. I'm going to go with clip A and just push this guy here. It's all good. Uh, and let's see what happens. Oh, look at that. Oh, so good. So good. Just feels so good. Zoom. I don't, you don't even have to do anything. Just feels so good. And then maybe towards the end, uh, what I did, I started animating the focal length just so we get it in a better spot here. So like that, like you higher and then it, poof, it explodes. But uh, let's finesse this later. I think for now, this is going to do. So this is one way of doing it. And you can also, when the explosion happens here, you can motion scale it and bam. So put three. So bam. More dynamics, more shake. And then by this point, you know, by this point, you would start putting it back to one. So there's just a bit of it happening. I don't like the zoom out at the end, to be honest. I'm going to leave it. I'm actually going to be zooming in. Yes. Yes. Much better. Bam. That's it for our previous. No, actually, that's that's not true. We still have some things. What is this? This is the rocks. So the rocks are out of bounds. So what we can do is we can do double double views just bring this rock here so we can see it so this is going to better frame our ship it's not going to be this super perfect now let's do another one and this one is more for in front of the camera and the camera is a bit low to be honest let's go here push it down so this would be a front rock like that. The reason why you would need this is uh, let's go back to uh, whoa, just one view. So the reason why you would like to have stuff like that is so you get some more parallax. You see, this is green. You know that depth. This is when we're going to be using the depth of field. That's where this would come into effect. Yes, that's. I think that's it for our previous. Now in the next. In the next video, we're going to be going into a layout. So I'm going to be finessing the animation just a little bit. And we're going to start putting in the rocks and creating a better environment for our spaceship. All right. See you guys in the next video.